to your mini lecture on chapter 11. These are personality disorders. Um, for this lecture, I'm actually going to focus on differentiating uh, the 10 different personality disorders. All of the criteria for the disorders are in your book. Uh, I will leave it to you to read those, but I'm going to talk a little bit about sort of what the main characteristics are um, and also how to differentiate them between each other and between other clinical disorders. Uh, let's actually start with what I mean by this idea of personality disorders. Uh, personality disorders are different from all the other disorders we've talked about so far. Uh, mood disorders, anxiety disorders, schizophrenia, all of those are what we call clinical disorders. Um, so oftentimes people can get them when they're younger or they can get them when they're older sometimes. They can have them for a while or sometimes they can have them for life. Um, but they're all sort of, uh, sort of oftentimes temporary or situational things. Uh, personality disorders though are very long-lasting. Um, when we think about them, we actually think about three different words. All of them start with P, so it's really easy to remember personality disorders. Uh, personality disorders are pervasive. Pervasive means that uh, the characteristics and the maladaptive behaviors are across all situations. So it's not just that people act this way in public or when they're alone or when they're with their family or when they're with their friends. Across multiple situations, these are behaviors or actions or ways of viewing the world that are consistent. So pervasive across situations is one. Uh, persistent is number two. These are long-lasting chronic disorders. Um, oftentimes you will see personality disorders kind of start in childhood with temperament and certain characteristics. Um, and then by the time they're an adolescent or a young adult, uh, we see sort of this this full-blown chronic state of viewing the world. Again, it's, it's, it's a way of sort of viewing the world that just is not really good. Uh, and that brings us actually to our third P, which is pathological. It's maladaptive. Um, so what makes a personality disorder different from a personality characteristic is that um, the personality disorder doesn't help the person function. It actually hurts them. And the way it hurts them the most is usually with their relationships. Um, oftentimes people don't know that they have a personality disorder, but others around them do because they recognize that this person is just not interacting with them in a way that um, other people would be interacting with them. So they are pervasive and persistent, which is chronic and across situations, and they are pathological, which means that they are hurting the person's function, particularly in the interpersonal realm or the relationship realm. Um, so this is, this is what makes personality disorders really hard to treat. Um, and make sure you sort of look at some of those things about treatment with personality disorders and what makes them difficult um, because they're very different ways of treating them than the other clinical disorders because of these three Ps. Okay, so now let's talk about what the actual disorders are. There are 10 different personality disorders um, in the DSM-5. We believed a year ago that they were actually going to take uh, some of these out but they chose not to, so we're going to go ahead and learn all ten. The great thing, though, is that they're, they're lumped together. So there's actually three different clusters of personality disorders. Um, so we're going to talk about them within their clusters. The first one's cluster A. Um, and these disorders you could describe as sort of the odd, eccentric, quirky sort of disorders. Um, the stereotypical cluster A disorder that we have is what we call schizotypal. Schizotypal. It's a real word, I promise. Um, and again, there's lots of criteria that you have to meet. I think it's five out of seven criteria. But I'm just going to talk in general what a schizotypal person is like. Um, basically, schizotypal personality disorder is kind of like a mild version of schizophrenia. Um, we have odd thinking, um, kind of borderline delusional, but not quite. Um, so they don't necessarily believe that they're God, um, but they have sort of odd beliefs about things. Where you're talking to them and you're like, oh, that's kind of a, a quirky person. Like, that's sort of a weird way of thinking. I wouldn't have thought that way. So they have odd thinking, they have odd beliefs. Um, they sort of have a quirky way of sort of going about the world. Sometimes they have magical thinking. Um, maybe they believe that unicorns exist somewhere in the world and we just haven't found them yet. Um, is that a delusion? Well, we don't know. Maybe they really do exist. Who knows? Um, so that's our schizotypal person. They're just sort of odd people. Um, when you're around them, you're just like, that's, it's hard to relate to them. Then we have the paranoid personality disorder. 
Um, the hallmark of this, of course, is suspiciousness. Uh, they believe that people are sort of out to get them, out to harm them. Um, and so they see hidden messages uh, or threatening messages when people talk to them. You know, maybe somebody's like, oh, you know, that was a great job you did in your presentation. I'd love to look at it. Um, and it was a harmless comment, but what they believe is that, oh, now you're going to challenge me. Now you're going to compete with me. You know, they see harm everywhere. Uh, they're very preoccupied that, that the people that, that are around them are loyal. And anytime somebody appears not to be loyal, then they will throw them out of their circle and they will hold a grudge like crazy. Um, so that's sort of the hallmark of the paranoid uh, personality person. It's hard to be friends with them because they're just so suspicious that people around them are sort of threatening or, or wanting to, to hurt them in some way. Um, different, a little different from delusional disorder though, delusional disorder that we talked about in um, the previous chapter when we talked about schizophrenic disorder. Um, delusional disorders are about one particular delusion, whereas paranoid personality disorder is a pervasive overall suspiciousness, suspiciousness of everybody. Uh, schizoid personality disorder are basically our loners. Um, these are people who don't really want to interact with others, have no desire to, to interact with others, and are really detached from others. Uh, they would be perfectly happy living as a hermit in a cabin. Um, and it's not that they're going to go and bomb the world, uh, they simply have no need for emotional attachments to people. Um, and again, we see that pathological um, maladaptive functioning when it comes to people. So we have our schizotypal, our paranoid, and our schizoid. Those are all sort of our odd eccentric behaviors. Cluster B uh, are the personality disorders that we hear about the most. Uh, in a clinical setting, we're going to see these people the most because their hallmark is really dramatic and extreme and impulsive, erratic behavior. And so they're acting out on these, these personality patterns, and so they're likely to sort of come on our radar much more than the cluster A. Uh, the, the hallmark cluster B personality disorder, if you will, is borderline personality disorder. You've probably heard of that before. Um, somebody with borderline personality disorder really has a, a huge fear of abandonment. That's really at the center of the borderline personality disorder. Um, and so what they tend to do when they interact with others is that they become really clingy um, and really close to somebody really, really quickly. You know, they become really impulsive, they have really extreme relationships, you know, they fall in love really, really quickly. But then they can also fall out of love really, really quickly too because they're afraid of being abandoned. And so uh, during a fight, um, you know, they get really, really mad and they they might uh, throw the person out of their life, um, but then the minute they do that, they are afraid and they try to then bring them back. So when I talk about borderline, I often, often say that their phrase, if you will, is, you know, I hate you, but don't leave me. You know, so they, they're very impulsive in relationships, but they really need other people to be near them because they're afraid of being abandoned and being alone. Um, Borderline personality disorder also oftentimes comes with some sort of self-harming. And so when you hear about people cutting, like cutting on their skin in order to cope with behaviors, or maybe cutting because uh, they're trying to manipulate somebody to uh, stay with them, that would probably be a borderline personality disorder. Um, so we separate that from what we would call a histrionic person. Uh, histrionic is an attention seeker, but they don't seek attention by cutting on themselves. They seek it by being the center of attention uh, when they're around people. So they're the people that at the party, they're the ones that are always talking, always getting everybody to pay attention to them. Um, again, with relationships, they're very impulsive. You know, oh, you're my best friend! And then the next night, they become best friends with somebody else. Um, they're just really extreme emotions, but they always have this need of being the center of attention, having everybody sort of look at them. Um, but they don't have usually the self-harming behaviors that we see with the borderline. So it's a very different uh, sort of way that each of them seeks attention. Uh, then we have the narcissistic people. It's exactly what you might think when you think of narcissism. Um, these are people whose hallmark is about self-importance, um, grandiosity, uh, I am the bee's knees and I'm awesome. And so oftentimes they'll deflate other people so that they then appear to be um, much bigger in their own eyes as well. Um, so they just are really egotistical, self-centered, um, I am the greatest person in the world. Um, oftentimes, the sort of core of that, by the way, is a low self-esteem. So when you get to the ideology, 
you'll see that um, our, there's a theory that low self-esteem and sort of some parental issues in terms of the parents not giving you enough self-worth uh, is at the heart of narcissism. Uh, then we have antisocial. Everybody always gets this confused. People think it means antisocial means shy, people who are against being social with other people. But actually, antisocial people tend to be very charming people. They tend to actually get along with people really, really well initially because they're very manipulative, because they want you on their side so that they can use you to get what they want. Um, I often say antisocial people are our criminals. Um, they don't really have respect for authority or rules, and oftentimes they will break them in order to get what they want. So they're very self-centered, very selfish. Their needs, their impulses come first, and everybody else they don't really care about. Um, sometimes in extreme versions, these people are also very callous, so they hurt people, but they don't care. Um, in the most extreme version, we get the people who are serial killers. They hurt people for fun, um, they enjoy it, um, and they have no empathy whatsoever uh, for causing pain to somebody else. Now that's a really extreme version. Most people with antisocial are not serial killers, but oftentimes they do end up being, becoming criminals because they break the rules and they have no regard for authority. And so the biggest part of that, so we actually have a lot of research on this population because oftentimes we can find them in prison settings. And about 10% of the, of the prison setting at any given time might, might um, actually meet the criteria for antisocial. The final cluster we're going to talk about is cluster C, that's the anxious people. Um, and again, we have three of them. Uh, we have the avoidant people. Now the avoidant people is what you might think of when you initially thought antisocial. These are the extremely sort of shy, withdrawn pe people um, who are really, really afraid of criticism. It's very, very similar to the diagnosis of social anxiety disorder, um, and many people believe that the two should actually be combined because there's so much overlap between um, what somebody with social anxiety disorder suffers and, and somebody with avoidant personality disorder. Um, so they're really afraid of criticism, they're afraid that people are not going to like them, and so they avoid social situations, they avoid meeting people new, they don't speak up in classes, um, they stay away from people because of the fear of criticism. Very different from the schizoids, we want to separate these two out, the schizoids stay away from people because they want to. They don't want to be around people. The avoiding people do want to be around people, they just don't know how to do it because they're too fearful and too anxious. Um, and too socially awkward in order to make it work. The obsessive compulsive personality disorder, different from obsessive compulsive disorder, in that OCD, OCPD, the personality disorder, uh, are basically perfectionistic people. They're very morally rigid, they're very stubborn with their beliefs, uh, they like order, they like cleanliness. Um, they're very task oriented when they're doing a task, it has to be exactly right, exactly perfect every time, otherwise they can't complete the task. Um, so they really have problems working in a group with somebody because they can't be flexible, they can't adapt to somebody else's um, style. They, it's their way or no way, it has to be perfect. So that's the obsessive compulsive personality disorder. The very last disorder is dependent. Um, dependent people are basically clingy people. Uh, they're people who don't take responsibility for their own lives uh, and they really want others to take responsibility for them. And so they will actually gladly hand over um, all the decisions in their life to somebody else and then give them the responsibility and say, well, if my life gets screwed up, it's your fault. Um, this was one of those disorders that might be taken out because a lot of the criteria when you look at that is very similar actually to what a stereotypical um, feminine gender role would be. And so a lot of people see the overlap there and think that dependence should actually be removed from the DSM. So there's a lot of controversy there. Um, so there you go. So there are, are 10 personality disorders. Again, remember that these are ways of interacting with the world. These are maladaptive usually within the relationships. Um, and so other people often notice that you have a personality disorder before you notice that you have a personality disorder. Um, if you have questions, be sure to post them. Um, on this blog, and um, be sure to also look at the etiologies and the treatments for these disorders.